I'm just going to introduce this lovely panel, and then we're going to look at some work and, and uh, hopefully talk. Uh, let's see, we're going to start with the kid, Bob Eckstein, right there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, Bob's been contributing to the New Yorker since 2007, which is a dozen years. Uh, he is the author of a New York Times best-selling book called Footnotes from the World's Greatest Bookstores. It's a great, great book. Good, close everything. Uh, he has a new book out just this week, like four or five days ago, called The Ultimate Cartoon Book of Book Cartoons by the World's Greatest Cartoonists. And there's a sequel, sort of a part of a series in the fall called Everyone's a Critic. One of the books is red, and one's blue, right? We stole that idea from the Beatles. The, the red, right, red and blue, and blue out. Out. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, and one of my favorite things about this guy is that he is the world's leading authority on snowmen. In his, That's the white album. <laughs> <laughs> ah. It's very fast. His illustrated history of the right. snowman came out recently. <laughs> uh, Marisa Akachella is right here. You can probably guess by Hi. the name. Uh, New Yorker since 1998. Mm. Mm. It's 22 years. Don't since I was what? Don't yeah, don't remind me. And, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's and you have an anniversary. April 13th was your first cartoon. So that's. I didn't know right that. Around, right around the bend. Wow. You yep. should celebrate that. Yeah. Your, your book, I'm going to say your book, I should say her book, mm -hmm. we're not just talking between us, uh, is, called, was called, uh, is called Antenna, came out in 2015, New York Times bestseller, and her graphic memoir, Cancer Vixen, from 2006, was named one of the Times' top 10 graphic memoirs, great book. Oh, you don't want that, okay, all right, and, uh, and then I was supposed to say something that I'm not. Um, got a pencil. Uh, Danny Shanahan, down at the end, drinking water. 31 years at the New Yorker. Wow. Since 1988. Uh, he, he's published a, a zillion cartoons in the magazine. Uh, among many collections, Bad Sex, I'm No Quack, that's a book of doctor cartoons, and a favorite of mine, Lassie Get Help. He has contributed 10 covers to The New Yorker. That's no wow. small thing. That's amazing. And uh, about me, real quick, uh, my name is Michael Maslin. I've been at The New Yorker for 42 years. See, there's been a sort of a transition. We're getting to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so 42 years. My last book was a biography of Peter Arno that came out three years ago, available everywhere for eight cents or something. Uh, uh, that's okay. That's fine. At least it's available. That's a good thing. Uh, what else do I have to say about me? Oh, yes, uh, I have a, a website, uh, michaelmazin.com. It's called Ink Spill. If you like New Yorker cartoons, if you like the history of them, if you like now, if you want to know what's possibly going to happen tomorrow, go there. Uh, I have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and then the man of the hour, Mort Gerberg. 54 years at the New York Wow. wow. April 10th is actually the first, the date of that first issue. That's amazing. Lincoln was the editor. Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln. Well, he, he, he did a good job with the cartoons back yeah. then. Uh, I had no sense of graphics, though. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> yeah, we have this wonderful book. We're here because of this wonderful book. Uh, celebrating his 54 years in the business. Uh, Mort taught for 15 years at Parsons. He's done, he's done a lot of things, and we're going to hear about them, I think, as we go along. Strips, television, published over 40 books. Uh, his 1983 cartooning, The Art and the Business, is a wonderful book. This guy in the front has a copy. You can hold it up and throw it in. It's a great book for uh, beginners. Uh, and I posted on my website, Reese, there it is, posted on my website the other day that the introduction of that book is really fabulous. I, I didn't know about it. Um, it's a great insight into the early years at the magazine and in New York magazine, the magazine world of what, how it used to be. And it's the longest uh, written piece I've ever seen. Well done. And um, 
check it out. Check it out. Uh, what else? He had, oh yeah, big news, not news. He has an exhibit at the New York Historical Society. It's on till May 5th. It's called A New Yorker's Perspective, Double Meaning, sort of, maybe. Their idea. Okay. Uh, and, and business is that he's signing at D151 from four to five after this. And now we will get to this. You've been looking at that, that's the cover. Uh, the, I'm gonna show you an example of work by our other panelists, One Piece, and then we'll move to Mort. So it's Bob Eckstein's. Uh, piece. I love that cartoon. Great that is so great. That's one of my favorite cartoons ever. I, tried that same idea I was just color. saying, Bob, that's one of my favorite cartoons ever. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything you want to say about that, Bob? You have anything? No. Okay. <laughs> was it in the New Yorker? Let me it's no cap. You. It was not in the New Yorker. Okay. It wasn't even held. But, but it's oh, yeah. very popular. It, it is popular in other countries like Brazil and in China. And all these yoga centers and meditation centers have stolen this cartoon. It got 750,000 likes on my Facebook. Wow, that's amazing. Great. So when you say a cartoon isn't held, for this, well, in other just words, for when we all turn in batches to the New Yorker. Um, at the time that I turned this in, uh, the editor was Bob Mankoff, and he would select his favorite cartoons from your batch. And then they would go on to the next stage, which would be that he would present them to the main editor of the magazine at a meeting later in the week. Uh, but you had to get past the first step, which I could never convince him to hold the cartoon to show even to Remick. I can't believe that wasn't held, because I really yeah. think that's one of the okay. best cartoons. Well, that just goes to show that everything's subjective. I'm sure right. a lot of people mm -hmm. here saying, well, it's not so big deal. It back, is a big deal. Back when I, mean, I started, that's our they did life, the same right? thing. I got when I when I first sold, they said they sent me a little note, a little scrap that said holding too. Mm -hmm. I had no idea though. I thought it meant that I sold, so I had I had a party. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Spent great. your money that you they didn't actually, make. They actually did buy those too. Oh, I okay. thought that it meant sold. I found out that it doesn't mean that though. Pretty pretty soon afterwards. There's a lot of great New Yorker terminology that I actually have a glossary somewhere on my site someplace, and. It's fun. It's like a different language. We all know it said, it like said holding, holding too by yeah, Lee, yeah, holding Lee Lorenz batch. had written it so you, nobody can re could read it anyway. Right, illegible. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> next cartoon by Marisa. Oh, yes. <laughs> if that's not definitive, I don't know what is. Can you read it? <laughs> that is Marisa. If you want to know dates, I have them, but. That was the just... first cartoon I ever got that ever got published. That was my first really? one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. No, wait a second, actually. What a way I was in. wrong. That was my wow. second. Okay. But still. Well, you can sell one if it's within the first sold and the second. You know, that's, right. that's true. We're getting weedsy. Okay. okay. Yeah. But. Weedsy. Okay. Uh, okay. Danny Shanahan. Oh. That's it. <laughs> See, I didn't know which one you were going to select. You that's said a good surprise one. you. Yeah, it's good. That's, a, that's, uh, that's my mom. <laughs> I'm one of a, a one of eleven e eggs, so yeah. Wow. Wait, really? You're one of eleven? Yeah. Actually, my mom did have one child who was still born, and she thought she couldn't have kids ever again. So then she went and had eleven. So that mm -hmm. that's true, and it, so that's a dozen. So. But yes, I'm one. I'm one of eleven. And counting. And they're all alive still, which is even more of a miracle. All right. Huh. On to more. Uh, these are not in any chronological order, except. Right after the first one I show you, then there'll be a little early childhood stuff. But then we'll get into your other things. So the first one, I just love this cartoon. I, I hadn't seen it before. It was in the New Yorker <clears throat> a while ago. But uh, I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's really good. Somewhere like, I have to be. Like something. most things uh, in cartoons, this obviously came out of my own sense of uh, anxiety or whatever. <laughs> I never could figure out where I was. It's beautiful. More, you. more. you did a similar cartoon with a golf ball, am I right? Do you remember one you did for Golf Digest? Because this is like a trope for you, that scene outside the balcony of a party. Really? I, now, I have a few favorites of yours in which you do different variations on this setup. Well, I don't remember golf ball, but I did a, a very popular one in uh, 
the New Yorker with a snowball. That was the Sisyphus one, where the, the guy is pushing, uh, the snowman is pushing the Sisyphus snowball up the hill. That's I, a little I, like your thing, snowman. I, I, didn't, snowman. I, didn't, I don't I remember the go golf ball. I hate golf. I don't know. Why. I know you have one with a baseball going up the hill, and the guy on top is with a bat. That's right. I did That's that a good too. one, too. <laughs> I got to say one thing about Mort. He's the jock of cartoonists. <laughs> It's true, aren't you the pitcher, right? Well, I am this, I mean, yeah, I've been the starting, like, the starting pitcher he's a starting for the pitcher. softball team for years, right? And that was uh, always been a favorite sport of mine. And, and a tennis, tennis player. player. Right. We have and tennis, a tennis players player. on this panel. We have Danny's a player. I, I play tennis and you do as well. Oh, that's right. We have tennis too. Well, and ski. Well, I got a skiing car too. I swim. <laughs> I do Pilates. Well, I met, I met Marisa, actually, on a sports note. Actually, she had come into the New Yorker as a young person coming out, and she told me that she had this assignment to go into the Knicks locker room uh, to do a reportage story. Well, there were two things that were activated then. First, reportage, uh, which is some passion of mine. So I always did a lot of sketching and drawing. And the second thing was the Knicks, you know, because I, I had done a working on a book with Walt Clyde Frazier, if that means anything to anybody here. And yeah. I was really in a whole thing. And I said, you're going to the Knicks locker room? She said, yes. I said, what do you know about uh, Season tickets in 1970, 1973, like whatever, thank you very much. Whatever it was. <laughs> and I one. said, well, if you go into the Knicks, not, say hello to, 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 to Walt uh, Clyde Frazier for me. And she gave me this look, and she said, you don't know. Oh, Frazier, wait. Wait a second. Like that. And, I, and I said, wait a second. And she said, yes, I said, go and ask. And she came back the next week. And Wait, she, can I tell what Mort, what Clyde did? Uh, what? I'm like, hey, uh, Clyde, uh, <laughs> Mort Gerberg says hello. And this is, I just have to do this imitation of Clyde. Oh, you know Mort. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did. Well, Tell him I said hi. <laughs> he was not ever known for his laugh. I <laughs> well, mean, he's a great I ball like, player. I was like a little bit surprised by the laugh. Oh. Anyway. All right. He doesn't really. Anyway. He's like slashing this is in reference, and dishing This and is in reference to uh, anyway. Marisa's ab ab admiration of my jock ability. Yes, that's why we always okay. said you were. And I love what you did in the book. Oh, the next thing. The next thing yeah. was yeah. so great yeah. with the Milwaukee game. Oh, I'd love to talk about that. that yeah, you, the whole... Is there anything you want to say? That was like my favorite part of your you book, actually. You want to talk actually. about that? Okay. We don't have a slide of that, but we talked about it. Well, one of the things I love to do in the book, uh, well, any place, was, was the reportage. And I, I always was motivated to do things that were of interest to me. That's the whole thing, to do something that interests And we'll get into that a little bit later. But the point is, specifically on the, on the uh, basketball thing, I went to the editor, as I often did, Dick Schaap, who happened to be a friend, a sport magazine editor. And I said, the Knicks have got to be a great thing. This is when they were competing for the championship, you know, whole big thing. Anyway, we got to the fact that I was going to be doing this thing about the Knicks, and so that's what it was. I went five days in a row, five nights in a row, Judith came with me. She was watching the game, and I was doing all these sketches and everything else, and I, I love, I, I think it's like three or four page, three or four sketchbooks that are filled. Oh, that's wow. so great. And, and some it. of the stuff is over in the exhibition, and if anybody's interested, that's the on-the-spot sketching. And I simply selected a lot of those things, and then I wrote these imaginary, not so imaginary, overheard captions that put this whole thing together. And that's what Mirsa is uh, referring to in, in, in the book here, in the reportage. And the pretzel man, I mean, like, so well, great. Like, everything. You just captured the whole, well, the, the overall vibe and what the whole experience was like, being a Knicks fan back then. and. Yeah, well, that's... Willis Reed and Bill Bradley. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah, all right. But yeah, like, I love that. I just, it's really great. Well, it's, uh, it's one of the things that I really enjoy doing a lot. And with respect to the retrospective, Michael, this is, again, I, I'm grateful for the uh, 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 society for allowing or doing this exhibition, because <laughs> it allowed, you know, the exhibition of work other than the New Yorker. I mean, we're known... Brand names. Judas always says your brand name is a New Yorker cartoonist. Well, yeah, I did that, but all of us do other things besides these single panel cartoons in the New Yorker. Thousands of them, but all cartoonists are so gifted. There's so many different 
capacities of able to do things. I mean, every one of us is doing all of these things as well. That's that's the point. I actually don't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to say what I say. I mean, it's it's Inspil, really? It's truth. Uh, well, who wrote who wrote the book on Arno? Who, who yeah, that? really. Some other guy. Some no, other no, guy. No, right. Another, another right. phase. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to 1940. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. Just to just to you know, we don't have to talk much about it, but just to show, I think we all have this in common. When we were kids, we we're this is a really good drawing for you know, a kid. I was uh, right? six months old when I did this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very early drawing. Mm, very nice. Very nice. Uh, the, the thing I loved about, just go back for a second, sure. Mike. Uh, on the bottom, you see the way I signed it. See, Morton Gerberg in that yeah, great well, scene. Yeah, I, mean, I had just learned to write. So it was a whole, <laughs> and what's interesting, it was so visually interesting for me in looking at the uh, retrospective, is not the development of the drawing, but in the development of my signature. So when you get onto these layers, now we we're getting... Taka, this is a good professional signature. But up to this point, you'll see these other ones. It's all these labored things. What should a good signature look like? And I would practice drawing like Al Cap, you know. But it got, that's a well, this, this next page is going to show, my. I like it, Morty. Oh. You're, you're Morty. Yeah, Mor oh, the Morty, right. the Morty here. Right. Just examples of early things, high school well, and the college. Upper, and the upper left-hand corner, that Willie Fail, that's from high school. Wow. And then the, the two, the three on the right-hand page are from City College when I started to do um, a panel uh, for the ticker, the uh, City College downtown newspaper. And that was my first publication. Actually, and, and yeah, you see that very artfully created Morty Gerberg. Very nice. <laughs> you like that with the thing going? Very nice. Uh, the upper right one is very sort of underground comics-y looking, I thought, you know, sort of pre-Robert Crumb. The upper right one there. Yeah. Very. Uh, well, I think what's the, the tortured, um, the the tortured line work there. I was so, I thought cross hatching was like the, the the beginning and end all of cartooning. I must have spent you know more time on one of those drawings, uh, you know, than I did for like a whole week's worth or something later on. But anyway, and then on the left, down on the left, I, I it was a parody of, of Al Cap. Speaking of that. Uh, that I love to do from an April Fool's issue, just to sort of show off that I guess I could copy. Yeah, it's nicely done. Really well done. Very nice. And we'll, now we we'll get to reportage. Uh, mm. Just an example, mm. uh, like the fact that you're at the Newport Book Festival. Nice drawing of Mary Travers, Peter Paul Mary up there, Bob Dylan from there somewhere. The thing about these were, uh, again, first of all, like the Mary Travers in the upper right hand corner or the Dylan in the upper left. These, these might have been like 20-second uh, sketches. I mean, it's just grabbing it, and that's what they've been sort of saying about. You know, it, it wasn't really trying to draw them. It was just uh, trying to, I guess, reproduce the, uh, what you were saying before about the feeling of the moment. Uh, and I, I, I don't know, it just came out that way, and I would fill sketchbooks like that. You know, walking around. You know so different than your than yeah. cartoons. It's hmm? you know, very different than your cartoons. Very, very different. Yeah, um, but as I turn later on and looking at it more, you see the stuff that I did, like the, you know, the recent stuff, the online stuff. Uh, yeah. uh, it, it's also just very uh, haphazard almost. What I really love, especially like looking at the Mary Travers drawing, it's like the lines that aren't there. It's like you, you see the mouth, the nose, the hair, and like everything else is left up to the imagination, but you know who it is. And I just love the fact that it's, so minimal but so expressive at the same time and even the guitarist like you just indicated the guitar and and his feet and his legs and it's just like the expressions are your drawing is really beautiful well thank you very 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 much really for that but i really to be totally honest with you mm -hmm. i i mean i did not have in my mind a conscious thought that i'm going to leave out the line like the indicating chin, yeah. mary after travis's uh, chin. But it doesn't I think it was there. 20 seconds. I didn't have any more time. Maybe it's like, no, it, it's perhaps like getting in, into a, a routine. I used to, you know, do a lot of sketching on the subway. You're mm -hmm. sketching on the subway, you got to do it fast. Somebody's going to get off in 15 seconds. I mean, you have to, you do what you can and you, whatever, I don't know, maybe there's some sort of an automatic selection of what mm -hmm. you do, of, of what. Anyway, thank you. Uh, for, for the, Here's some more yeah. Democratic Convention. 
famous convention. Oh, this was um, this was something else. I mean, this was such a, an emotion-filled uh, four or five days. Uh, it, it really was everything that everybody wrote about that time, that political thing, the Chicago 8, I mean, running around with Paul Krasner. And uh, I mean, and just again, trying to echo what I was feeling in, 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 and selecting things uh, and the kind of people who were there. Yeah. And what was, what, what's interesting about doing drawings and reportage like that is that I looked at these drawings. This is like 1968. I look at these drawings and I remember doing them. Well, you it's know? a special time and place. Too. Well, I mean, I just sort of remember being in that emotional thing of, yeah. But they're timeless, so, and like the compositions and the way you put everything together, it's just, you know, like an innate sense of like how to compose them. <laughs> really beautiful. Thank you. I mean, apart from being funny, the drawings are magnificent. Thank you. One more quick one, just to show more range. Things. This is this was a thing about pot, right? Pot smoking. So these are all related to pot smoking. Well, this is from this is from a book that I did called The High Society, or What Happened When the Country Finally Went to Pot, and the book uh, was originally published in what was it, 60, 70, something like that, and of course it didn't go anywhere. And what people sort of noticed when we were putting this book together. Uh, was that the issue of marijuana legalization is just as strong today as it was all those years ago. So actually, this book has been recreated, and uh, uh, it's on sale. So in other words, we're redoing it. I had a new introduction about it because, again, it has to do with, with things now. Great. Very timely. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to move into your... <laughs> you know, the nice story about this is this was your second publication at The New Yorker. Second publication, first sale. First sale. Sale, second publication. First publication um, about the World's Fairs, but I thought this was the one to show, right? This is a beauty, full page this, in the New Yorker. Yeah, the, my first drawing in the, in the New Yorker was a full page, and from there on it was all downhill. So, <laughs> uh, it was, you know, it's a whole big story about this, but it was really a, a phenomenal, and you know, you could probably spend hours just talking about how it did not come in, but yeah, it was the, uh, it was the first sale. And notice, you notice the signature. You see, I'm trying to get there a little bit. <laughs> it's <laughs> almost, yeah. almost there, but yeah. it's not. Uh, OK. Ah. <laughs> Explain, please. Well, again, it begins with personal uh, things that are of a tremendous interest to me, which, of course, in this case, is skiing. As, as Marisa has already testified, the I'm, I'm the big jock. <laughs> and so I became a double black diamond skier. And everything skiing was very important to me. And I did a lot of other, you know, fables and, and assignments and things like that, doing, and did a lot of cartoons on uh, uh, skiing. And I'm just laughing at myself. I once, I sold a cartoon, it was published in the New Yorker, uh, about this guy standing at a ski top of the, of the mountain, you know, and the signs tell you which trail to go down. And it was published, uh, you know, and I, Maybe sometime later, whatever it was, I went in and I sold another batch, and I got an OK from Lee, Lee Lorenz, who was the editor at that time. And I said, OK, that's great. And I'm bringing it in, and I do the drawing. And Lee said, oh, wait a second. Uh, we have a correction to make. Said, what, what, what's that? That's not an OK. You, that, I, OK, we just gave you that, which is this drawing of the guy standing at the top of the mountain looking at this thing. I had forgotten that I had sold it. I said, why not? He says, we've already published it. <laughs> so it's the same. This, uh, again, looking at the most, what I thought the most classic of skiing cartoons of all was this absolute legendary cartoon by Charles Adams. Um, and I looked at it, and I, at the time that, I forget what the date of this is, but obviously it was after the beginning of uh, um, snowboarding. You know, 2001. 2001, uh, which I didn't like because I like the old way of skiing generally. So I thought I'll make some kind of a comment about snowboarding. And suddenly it occurred to me that that was the legitimate explanation to Charles Adams' original cartoon, which of those mm -hmm. of you who remember or not, cartoon. is that it's the same image, except I really reversed it. It's a flip. Uh, and the skiing trails, there's two of them, coming from one skier, 
That's the whole point. If Adam's joke was somehow indicating that the guy somehow had materialized around a gun on a tree. So this was my, uh, my homage uh, to Charlie, as it were, and uh, that ran whenever. Danny and I were talking on, the, on the, Danny came down with me from upstate. We were talking about his, he did a series of Thurber takeoffs, but people didn't really understand. People didn't take to them, no. They thought, I got a lot of mail, because they thought I was just ripping him off. They didn't realize it was. Oh. Uh, did you get that? Or no. People? No. Mine were over three three years, so it took them. Th really? After three years, I didn't get as much hate mail, but the first two, it's tough. Well, sorry. <laughs> Mort, did you know Charles Adams? Did you get a chance to, to uh, interact with him? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it was, uh, uh, and I sort of used it about how people get ideas, which I've often talked about. And when I did the, the book, which thankfully was held up, you know, as a thing. There's a big chapter in there about how I got ideas. And I said, as I was writing, there are two questions, two questions that all non-cartoonists who are enamored of cartoonists ask the cartoonists. The first one is, what kind of a pen do you draw with? Because obviously, if they knew, they would be able to draw as well as you. So, mm -hmm. And the second is, where do you get your ideas from? For which there is truly no answer. Although I, I wrote three chapters in a book about it. And I had asked a lot of people. I did a lot of interviews in the book. I mean, the best of the best. That was their classic cartoonists. And I asked them all, how did they get ideas? And they all had cockamamie ideas one way or another. And so, yes, I went up to Charlie one day, you know, the thing, and I said, Charlie, I ask everybody. So I'm going to have to ask you, how do you get your ideas? And Charlie looked down at me and he said, well, Mort, he said, I don't really know. I'm kind of like a cow. I just give milk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was as good as any I'm going to get from that. Right. that was, and I, Great milk. Yeah, right. Yeah, really. And really. Michael, your first cartoon that you sold to the New Yorker was drawn by Charles Adams, right? Uh, Whitney Darrow. But, Whitney Darrow. But I, but I did Same do, person, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> some people think it's a secret that New Yorker cartoonists, some of them actually used ideas from other people. Charles Adams was one. He did a drawing of mine back in the early uh, 80s, uh, which I thought was an honor, you know. Mm -hmm. He did a great job. My, my job oh, yeah. stank. stank. Yeah, it was awful, but he did this beautiful full page one. Uh, so it was, that was nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was great stuff. What was the caption for the uh, drawing of the second book before the drawing before? The, uh, the, uh, I've always been partial to high ceilings. Yes. Uh, I've always been partial to high ceilings. It's a great drawing. It is a great drawing. This is another favorite of mine. I always like this one. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I love that. Well, this, this again, as, as, as I said before, is always, always uh, sort of precipitated by uh, real life and things that happened to me. Uh, Judith and I had bought a house upstate uh, near Hillsdale, New York, in Hillsdale, New York, around. And suddenly we had a house. You know, a house with things to do, you know, like mowing the lawn, like whatever it is. And uh, I don't know, it just came to me one day, we were gonna, this is supposed to be a weekend. You go driving up and then you're in your house. But when you get there, you have to do all of these things. And uh, at one point, you know, obviously this is the result of it. <laughs> Sitting there and obsessing about what I had to do instead of whatever. Nice. Thank you, though. That's it. Love How me. long did you have the house for? 41 years. Oh, OK. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we all do this, right? We all, we all take some things from the comics. Oh, absolutely. No, Why it's, a great, it's a, great, a great trope. This actually was one of the things that had gotten me sort of introduced to uh, the New York Historical Society. They were putting together an exhibition maybe about four or five years ago, maybe some of you remember it, it was called uh, A Superheroes in Gotham. And uh, I had gotten to know one of the p people, and I said, well, I can help. You know, they, they asked me, do you know any cartoonists? Because the idea was the New York City cartoonists uh, in those early 30s were the ones who created all of the superheroes. And so I, I said, yes, I got drawings from Jules Pfeiffer, you know, a couple. And then I remembered that I had a, a Hebrew school drawing that I had done. Uh, 
of Batman beating up guys, bad guys, in, in the cover of the Hebrew school book. And they loved it, and they put it in a glass case. Actually, I got one in the current ex exhibition also. It's a different Hebrew school. <laughs> it's a different, different Batman. But they're still beating up bad guys. But yeah, we all did that. That was the whole thing. And I mean, uh, Pfeiffer always talked about the fact that how he was never a jock. I mean, he could never play ball. I mean, he grew up in the Bronx, too. But what he could do was draw. And he would be on the sidewalk drawing all these superheroes. And everybody thought he was a great hero, you know. And they said, oh, this is terrific. So, uh, yeah, we all did it. And he did that book, which I can't remember the title of, the classic book about comic books. Great American. Uh, Com Great American. Com oh, he, Thank you. does he yes. talk about that in the book? Yeah, yeah the whole book. Yeah. Well, you had, yeah. It's, it's a, sort of a standard. Yeah. This one, I, I love all of them. That's why I, I love yeah. this, especially. Yeah. Yeah. A, a question, since I saw color, did you submit covers to the New Yorker? Actually, I submitted a couple of ideas, and actually, one was held for Charlie, for Adams. Uh, okay. And uh, but I, uh, not many. I tried a couple, but uh, I, I just uh, I don't know. I again was doing all these other things, yeah. and I just that that required a little special thing. But this also one was Lee was doing both covers, and uh, I think I might have done some ideas, black and white, but not not this. Wasn't this, this was a, a back page yeah, from before a, the cartoon? This is a yeah. New Yorker. No, this is a New Yorker back page. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I remember when it was a Thank you. I loved it. Yeah. Next one's for Bob Eckstein. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. This, I, this is before I knew you. This is my territory. <laughs> Uh-oh. Dun-dun-dun-dun. You did a well, couple of, at least two. I feel like, yeah. Ones that I saw, at least yeah, there's, there's one where he's on the phone in the phone. front yard yeah. making a phone call. Well, I had another one I, I, I liked. I think it's in the show, too. Of a, 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 It's a snowstorm, and the taxi cab is there, and a woman is running for the taxi cab. The other side is snow Snowman is also hailing the <laughs> oh, same. Yeah, I, yeah. I like snowman cartoons because they're easy to draw. You know, just the three circles, and you're done. <laughs> easy you're for you. Too. Mine are full of angst. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I love this one. This is so New York. Oh, I love this one, too. Everybody I, I love uh, this. You can't, they can't see the panel. First panel on the left, there's a woman only sitting on a bus, and uh, there's the, uh, the, the, the tableau on, on the top. And then the second panel, she's ringing the bell, and the legend on top says, stop, requested. And then she gets up in the third panel and waits, and there's no thing on the screen. And in the fourth panel on the screen, it says, request denies. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to sit down again. I love that. So New York. I mean, Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's one of my favorites in your book. I'd like to see more of these kind in the New Yorker. It would be nice if they came back. This, They're not this doing, yeah. They well, if they do, you know, if they start, then we all get all excited about it. All right, it, we, we do it. Let's, let's put let's up rest. a sign. Right. So let's all. <laughs> let's protest. Yeah. And this is. This is my sec. This is my third, I think. Second, third, or something like that. Sale. Uh, wow. To the magazine, sixty-six, yeah, Six, sixty-six. Well, published in sixty-six. Okay, well, it was not much time before that. Uh, yeah. I thought that you know, there's a little Charles Adams flavor going through some of these, like mm -hmm. this one. Really? He, well, he did a number of Mona Lisa cartoons. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you ever provide him with an idea? Uh, I did a couple. There was another, and I'm trying to remember. It was not he. It was another. I can't remember his name now. It was the three names. He did these wonderful, crazy people, um, legendary cartoons. No, no, maybe it'll come to me. It doesn't matter. Don't remember right now. Did you ever sell an idea to Adams? Did no. Ever, no? Okay. I just wanted to mention that I do have Charles Adams' uh, high school report card. Right. <laughs> he got bad grades and everything but art. <laughs> As you, from Westfield, New Jersey. Yeah, is that it was like. Sale, we, is it still for sale? It's still for sale. Okay. Yeah. Just thought it was yeah. Westfield, by the way, oh, the shape. Westfield, the town of Westfield, has these big, really big Gothic houses. That's what they're known for because I lived in the next town over mm -hmm. in Scotch Plains. So. Is there an Adams house? I don't know if there's an Adams house, but. There should be. There should be an Adams they house. They should make one. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah. all those houses look like the Adams family house. Oh. Anyway, yeah, a little factoid. Uh, this I thought was fascinating. This is odd. If you look at all of his work, if you look at anybody's work, you start seeing interests and 
things they go back to, New York City for you. And, and this one just was really a kind of out of the blue. Uh, well, once again, it's a personal thing. Judith and I were looking for this house that we eventually bought. We're up there, and they show us around the uh, Margaret Christiana, who is a real estate agent. We're driving here, driving there, and we get to this one place, a nondescript, nothing house, uh, on a but it was on the top of a hill, and we could see the, the Catskill Mountains, like 50 miles away, and what a view, incredible. And we're walking around, we're seeing the same thing, and as we were seeing there, a woodpecker is under it. Pa, 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 pa. And I said, oh, it's like music. It's just wonderful. We'll buy the house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's an immediate connection. That doesn't look much like a woodpecker, does it? I don't you know. know. But we, we know what it is. Come to think, whatever it we is. We have a good idea. Whatever. It's making noise, whatever. <laughs> Another, by the way, the one I'm going to show, the cat, this is captionless, obviously, and the next one's captionless. And we go back to Adams again. He said his favorite kind of cartoon was a captionless cartoon, which is like the hardest, I think, the hardest. Oh, I totally agree. I was just going to say the same thing. You, you get a drawing that is a, compart a complete cartoon without a, you don't need anything. It is a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun when they happen. That's I really love, great. yeah, no, and I love this. This was research. I had to go into these gyms to see what these damn things look like. <laughs> and they're much more complicated and harder to draw than you think. Who needed all these pulleys in things? And then, of course, I got all hung up about what Quasimodo might have really looked like. And then all of that. But it's it a was good class in my Very nice. Yeah. This one took more than 13 seconds. I mean, yeah. you know, this. Because <laughs> there was no Google then. No rule, right. <laughs> <laughs> this sort of classic New Yorker <laughs> office <laughs> cartoon, but very funny, right? Yeah. I didn't realize I stole my bad sex cartoon Sick. from you. Sorry about that. I, I'm sorry. Well, I, I did a cartoon with two dogs in bed and the woman is saying, bad sex, bad, bad, bad. To the, <laughs> and that was the title of my last book. And there you go. was There's not intentional. Somewhere. <laughs> Beautiful drawing. I love this drawing. Another use of uh, a classic. Uh, well, again, I always loved uh, Crazy Cat. I mean, an absolutely fantastic thing. And of course, the whole thing about Crazy Cat was the landscape. And again, it might have been a, a reading again of political times, which of course is a flavor which runs through a lot of my stuff because it's you know an interest as well. And people were talking about political landscapes. And then I guess I was moving around and political landscapes is crazy, all right? So now we have, there it is. That's how. It's what they call an evergreen, right? I mean, this could, as long as we have politics, we'll have that yeah. drawing. Hey, everybody, another favorite of cartoonists is the Desert Island. Mm -hmm, that's a death. Everybody does Desert Islands, and uh, this is a good one. Well, this, this to me, again, it was very, very personal. I, I, I went out to mail a letter, and I couldn't find a mailbox. And then I went out to make a phone call. I couldn't find a phone booth. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I kept thinking about writing a letter or uh, putting a coin in a meter, and suddenly, you know, I realized there was a lot of it. I originally thought of trying to do this as uh, somebody coming up to heaven, and this would have been in wow. heaven. Yeah. And somehow, um, maybe the desert island was easier to draw. I don't know. It's less sad, too. It's yeah, just it's just, sad. Anyway. Yeah. And, and uh, this is the last one, but the most recent cartoon. So this 50, is 50 years later. Just, yeah. This was just in, in March, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And they gave you a very nice space, which is always good for drawings that need space. And this one needed space, so we can appreciate it. Well, I, I will tell you that this was a rough. <clears throat> this so. is a rough. That's a rough? Wow. Wow. You want to explain what a rough is? Just to... Yeah. A, a rough is an initial drawing that just simply has an idea uh, with it. And normally you try to indicate in, in, in the rough what a quote-unquote finished drawing would look like. Um, and um, so they, they said okay with this, and I realized, actually, I had had this accident, which is now just about a year old, and I, I called Emma, who is now the cartoon editor, and I said, well, thanks for this, but I'm, I'm a little uh, unsure that I'm gonna do anything with this drawing. She says, well, don't worry about it. She knew I had the accident. She says, take as much time as you want with it. And the more I looked at it, the more I said, 
No, I, I did put it, I, I, all, you know, honesty, uh, I ran it through Photoshop and I got a copy of it and I used technology to clean it up a little bit. <laughs> That's about what I did. Maybe I might have put the turtle in on that, whatever animal is in the front or something oh, like yeah. that. I can't remember. Lord, it's a great drawing. And, it is great. Yeah. And I can only imagine what you could have done if you had two eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> I, when you said it was rough, I assumed you meant difficult because it's a difficult composition. That's good you pointed out you're not wearing the eye patch just for Mocha Fest to fit in with the goth. <laughs> <laughs> well, with things, with things like this, this was, I, I remember, I just sort of built it as it went along. It's just like adding things. Uh, yeah. It's an awful, it's an involved rough, though. My roughs are black and white. They're finished, and they, pu they, I, they are published in other publications. They're just not shaded. I also signed them R Chast. <laughs> so they're very funny. So they might sell. So you never sell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're very funny. They're, 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 but thank you, Bob. This is. Uh, it's beautiful. Did you use a lot of reference, and how, you know, what went into doing it? It's such a difficult drawing. Well, first of all, none of those animals actually exist. They're all fake. <laughs> That's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, I have done a, let's say, a handful or more of these large groups of animal cartoons. I've done a, like safari, you know, a lot of safaris. Mm -hmm. I did a, a huge one uh, for Look Magazine years ago about the watering hole, uh, all of these animals all crowding in. It's the same kind of thing. Somebody saying, does it gotta be a better place to go for a drink at the end of the day? You know, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of make them up. And again, they probably are uh, just in my mind. In very few cases, uh, I actually do research when I really don't know how. Wait a second, who was it who sent me an email about, uh, uh, oh no, it was Pat Burns who sent me, I think I had put this up on Facebook uh, as well, uh, that it was in the magazine, and he said something about, uh, what's the animal that hangs upside down on the tree? A sloth, yeah. Sloth. And so Pat wrote, he says, that's a great sloth underneath uh, the, the gangplank. And I wrote back, is that a sloth? I, I thought it was a monkey. I, I didn't know. I said, maybe you can teach me how to draw a sloth when I get, when we go out to. Uh, so did you get this in one shot, though, or you just drew it one? one? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Well, why would one, why would anybody want to do that twice? Yeah, really. <laughs> that's <laughs> too hard. But that's, I mean, to get it in one shot, that's yeah, pretty. The, the new pretty book really demonstrates drawing that I wasn't aware of. I mean, I. I have the red book, which is like a Bible for people starting out. Mm -hmm. I have one for the home, one for the car. And I <laughs> didn't see that type of drawing, though, in the book. I mean, this is a really sh a real great showcase of really what you could do. It's really amazing. I agree. I think this one and also the cathedral one with sure. the perspective mm -hmm. and the Jacob's Ladder, especially. Well, the, the, especially the cathedral one is a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, my first finish of that, I, mm -hmm. I, wish, I, I wish I had been able to find the rough to that. Mm. That would have been interesting. Yeah. But I, I know that it was an eight and a half, 11, very, very rough kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I got the okay. This is Jim Garrity, who's way, you know, before Lee Lorenz. And, uh, um, well, there was a whole little story with that. What you were referring to before, the little known secret. Uh, all right, I'll tell the story. It's not much of a secret now, though. Well, it's hardly that. It's out of the bag, but go ahead. But, you know, there was this, this whole tradition in referring to your reference to that introductory chapter of the way it was, I mean, it was a very perfunctory thing. I would go up with 12 drawings every day into this office on 44th Street, a narrow, claustrophobic place that had a little window where you could hand drawings to a receptionist. And then she would give you back the drawings that you left the previous week, totally rejected, with nothing involved at all, which would go on for months and months. Even for the best of them, Bob Weber went through for two years without getting any kind of a response. Mm -hmm. Bob so Weber, the great. best charcoal drawing in the, in the world. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, one day I came up and I you know, gave him my new envelope and she looked at it and she said, Gerber, Mort Gerber, oh, just a second, please. And I said, uh-oh, what's that? She says, just a second, please. And I'm standing there, I think, they're going to tell me, you know, never come here again. You know, that, that's the end. And the door opens up and... Um, if she's around or if anybody knows who she is, if she's still alive or anything else, forgive me, my impersonation. This young woman from New Zealand came up. Her name was, is maybe still alive, I don't know, Barbara, 
Okay. She was Garrity's secretary. Oh, Nichols. Still alive. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she, she lives up where you used to live. Upstate? She may have bought your house. <laughs> <laughs> and she can't relax I thought it, she came walking out. She's holding this eight and a half, eleven rough, really, this, this rough, you know, drawing of this cathedral thing, holding it at the corner, you know, like it's totally soaked in anthrax or something like that, you know. <laughs> And she said, Mr. Gerberg? I said, yes. She said, uh, we should like to buy this. I said, all right. Oh, my God. Really? That's great. Terrific. What do I do? Will I draw? I said, she says, no, no, no. You, you, you can't draw this. I said, yes, yes, I can draw. She said, no, no, no. You can't draw this. Draw. I said, yes, I know how to draw it. I'll draw. She says, oh, well, very well. But we, we had our own artists to do these drawings. That was, you know, what we say. And I said, well, yes, but I, I know how to do this. And she said, oh, very well. Well, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of good. I won't, I won't go on afterwards, but there was a series of things. And my first drawing was rejected. And I think then I, that we're gonna, I said, and they offered to buy it. I think $50 they were going to give me for the ring. And I said, no, I'm going to do this myself. I didn't even know. It's you amazing knew. that they wow. yeah. I didn't know any no, of I didn't that. Know either, it's like right? dumb, dumb, you know. Yeah. And I said, I'll take, it to, I'll take it to Esquire. And I brought it out to Esquire. They rejected it. And then, and then uh, maybe uh, two or three or four weeks later, I, get a, I went up there again with my envelope. And there's a note from the lady. She said, Mr. Garrity would like to see you. And I said, oh, I'm finally going to get in the back room. And he said, um, we, we want to buy that drawing, that idea. I said, I, I don't want to sell my ideas. I do the drawing. No, no, you can't. No, no, that was her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he offered more money, I think $75. And I said, no, I don't want to do it. And I did another drawing, and it was no good. But then the point, which is, gets leads up to you, I didn't know how to really do it. All right, Bob, I'm answering you. I'll have a workout. How do you do this? Thing? And I had all of these clips, the photographs, right? St. Peter's Square, paint this, St. Paul, St. Thomas, whatever. And it was not working. That's what I had used. And suddenly I said, wait a second. I know what to do. And I went home and I got a sketchbook and I went to St. Patrick's okay. Cathedral. Uh -huh. And I sat in the back pew and that's what I drew. Well, it's beautiful. And that's. You could tell. You could tell it's beautiful. In other words, that's what I probably needed. And mm -hmm. who knows, maybe that started off my real interest in mm -hmm. doing stuff from life. And, well, it's amazing that they allowed you to do it after, you know. Uh, Three offers. Yeah. And well, throwing I was, all that money at that's you. That's unusual. I well, I was too <laughs> stupid to know anything. About. I think we all were. I mean, we don't, who would know that they're going to buy your idea? Well, maybe somebody was talking to you when you were starting out. You, you, you knew Nobody already. talked to me. No, <laughs> there were a lot of rules that we didn't like. I, I never sent you an email or something. I never knew that when you sold, you know, when I finally sold to the magazine, I was living out west, and when I my first time back to the city, which is where I was born, but I just went to the magazine and I just walked right in to see Lee. And afterwards, I found out you you have to be invited back. Just because you're in the magazine doesn't mean you go back there. But he wait, was, you just walked up on, on Tuesday or Wednesday? I just went in on a Tuesday, brought some work in, and just walked straight back to Sealy without being let in. But well, he, he was fine, and he was, you know. Oh, sure. Uh, well, that was that. He was great. But I just found out afterwards, you no, know, you're not supposed to do that. Well, I mean, things did change, uh, obviously. They yeah. did start I broke to that barrier. allow us to do, <laughs> yeah. yeah, do the tour. Any questions? I know it's probably late. Any questions? Ten minutes? Ten minutes yeah, to what? To four? Well, they're kicking us out of four, so. Okay. I, I had a question. Yes. So, Mort, the, uh, the Gerberg Museum, which is in Brooklyn, they have a museum for artists that they don't really have any money to do that. Do they have a museum that has artists that don't really have any money to do that? You mean I was supposed to get paid for that? <laughs> Damn. I knew. Well, did you sell, Did you get 75 or 50? No, 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 no. At that point, no. Uh, they were offering 
the 50 or $75, whatever. What are they paying for ideas later on? Uh, I don't know. A hundred. A hundred? I don't know they do still do it a little tiny bit, but they don't, I don't know what they pay. But you would have gotten I'm sure whatever. you donated to St. Patrick's. Well, I'm just saying at that time, I, maybe, maybe it was $50 for so the idea. And maybe like when I handles. went back, they said 60 or 75 and they, But when I uh, sold the drawing, uh, that wasn't in addition to the idea. That was simply the drawing. And in those days, they paid, uh, and if you remember this, or you got it in your history, they paid by the agate line. Yeah. You remember? Square. So I would get $112.56, yeah. you know, or something like that. A weird, you know what an agate line is? The space oh, yeah, in yeah. the magazine, and that's how much space it was, and they probably prorated all the per. But it was a full page, right? That was mm -hmm. so yeah, that, they must have paid you more for a full page. Full page is good, though. You must have gotten more than Don't ask 350 me. I think, for standard size. That would be interesting, Michael. I'd like to have you look it up. And no, 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 okay. no. You're easy. You do that. I mean, what percentages? Because I remember yeah. I was very friendly with Ed Fisher then at the time, and he was a big, big seller. He and he great. would just, well, he was also a contract artist. Uh, sort of, that was not. So there's always a you know different thing. But... Um, the numbers, the amount that was on the check was weird. And every single time I got a check in those days, the early days, it was a different number. So oh, I never yeah. knew. Yeah, it was a surprise. Always by what, so you know, what was being paid. And again, I was not being paid uh, uh, at, at, a, uh, at a, con a contract artist uh, rate uh, then, which is less than or more than. <laughs> more than, yeah. More than. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's not a fixed number. That it's not. It is I remember submitting a lot of full-page ideas and two-page ideas because we got paid by Square Inch at first. Well, yes, yes, then it would be yeah a, a full page. Actually, yeah. when, when Emma uh, told me they were going to buy this, I said, well, a drawing like this has to go full page, doesn't it? She said, we don't, <laughs> she said, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> so, nice try, though. <laughs> Karen, you had a question. Um, so, a two-part question. Karen Green, by the way, the uh, tell, tell everybody who you are, Karen. Come on. She's the graphic novel librarian at the. Not a good Okay, sorry. That's why I said that because I knew it was out. Comics and cartoons at Columbia University, and uh, related to that, more after the exhibition is closed, where will people be able to find your cartoons? <laughs> Where can they buy your cartoons? No, no, no. Buy. Buy. She's, <laughs> see, 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 no, see. The, the, <laughs> Where can they find your cartoons? Where can they go and 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 ask Karen? Where the? Oh, I see. Them? I see are, what what are Karen you, is. Like, are you no, carrying this? No, no, no. This is a commercial. Is this like a no, 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 no. This is a commercial. I, I, I have a contractual arrangement with Columbia University okay. to give a good selection of my work to Columbia University. Well, uh, primarily because of Karen's wonderful and enormously persuasive ability. <laughs> it's a good thing. New York City should have a place for yeah. 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 So uh, It's a question but, over but, here. But actually, we're trying to, well, anyway, we'll go around. The good I'm question. I'm curious about how you, uh, they do the cartoons for the last page of Navi. They give you the drawing, and then the readers have to come up with the caption contest. Right. How, how, do, how do that work? It's it's seesawed back and forth over the years. They would take a cartoon from the the weekly work that we do, buy it for the caption contest, and take the caption off. That's basically what they do now. There's a, there's a there's a caption that goes to, but not all of them. But not, <clears throat> not wrong. No. Now what? But, but for a, well, for a while they did ask us to just. I've been say sending them. Actually, I've been sending them captionless cartoons, so they wouldn't take my caption. Oh, <laughs> I see. And that works. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they don't feel so bad. You know, and they steal it. <laughs> and strip it off. The, yeah, on occasion you can win the they caption would, contest. Possibly they would also ask for subjects. Uh, sometimes I mean, Bob used to do that. Yeah, a bunch of things with captionless, you know, drawings. Frankly, I hated it and uh, still, yeah. uh, you know, lobbied against the whole idea. Cause I, I did the very first one. So it's I a terrible. Uh, yeah. so Sam this, this, really this, hates it. Yeah, the very first one Dan, Danny did was a nurse with Quasimodo. Mm -hmm. And I remember <clears throat> I had no interest in cartoons, but I, on a dare, submitted something about that name rings a bell. 
And <laughs> that was my, I, was, I think I was in second place or something. I didn't think anything of it, but I actually came in second place in the first caption contest. That's wow. funny. And at that time, it was just once a year. I had nothing to do with cartoons for another 10 years until Sam Gross took me out for my birthday to lunch. A totally separate thing. And on a dare, he said, why don't you come back and try cartooning? <laughs> so it's, it's Sam Gross's fault? It's Sam Gross's <laughs> fault, always. It's always Sam's fault. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Anybody else? Yep. Yeah. So, Mort, what was one of the biggest risks you've taken in your career? I say again, I couldn't hear. What was the biggest risk? One of the biggest risks. The biggest risk? risk um, Does it involve Sam Gross? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good question. I don't, I don't really think I've felt that's a tough everything question. really has been sort of a risk. Weird. But I guess I've been kind of operating mm -hmm. on this, uh, um, on this what if uh, yeah. syndrome. I mean, once I started doing cartoons, you know, as it was going to be something I had to do, there was always something a little bit more. What if I did this? And what if I did that? So that's when I started doing like the reports. What if I did a children's book? So then I did a bunch of children's books. So it was actually, you know what? What it's really been dictated kind of from <clears throat> from the outside. Uh, I've done a few of these kind of like event things, and uh, I once well, it was a couple of years ago when I kind of came to this this thought. Uh, Judith and I were up in Newport, or no, Nantucket. That's where the fish are, right? So I was doing this talk, and it occurred to me that somebody said, where do you get your ideas? It's again, it's the same thing. And I started to do the Charles Adams thing, and I said, I said wait a second. You know, a cartoonist, you know, a cartoonist is like an oyster. You know, an oyster goes, swims around in the ocean, you know, and there's a lot of dirt and there's schmutz and stuff like that. And a piece of schmutz gets under the oyster's shell. Irritation. And so there's a reaction to it, and the oyster comes up with a pearl. Mm. So like a cartoonist goes through the world, and things annoy the cartoonist, or at least get his interest or something, and there's this reaction. And it's an automatic thing. You don't think about it, right? It's something that's a cartoon, and that's what it is. And sometimes the things are a little bit more ridiculous. And so I wound up, for example, somehow being on the Today Show with, with Robert Walters doing a live drawing in front of, how could I do that? That's risky. I didn't plan that, but it, it sort of happened. I think there is really not a risk in, 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 in trying something new. I guess the biggest risk I really did would have been to stay in my nine to five job all the way back in 1960, instead of quitting and starting all over again. That was probably the risk if I would have stayed there. So now I'm penniless, but I'm still happy <laughs> and <laughs> risk-free. <laughs> so I don't know. All right. I think we're going, going, gone. What? What? But you're drinking water. Okay. Is that a sign? <laughs> uh, kind of obvious. I see one cartoon. Any other cartoonists in this audience? There's another one. Sophia. Sophia. I Anybody else? That. Okay. Let's make sure that your people know who you are. Okay. Sophia uh, Warren. Robert, Hello. You introduce yourself. To... Yeah. Tom Bloom. Where are you, Tom? Oh, you're hiding. Okay. <laughs> Mark. Okay. Well, thank you all for being here. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.